In this episode, I'm going to show you how you can switch scenes in OBS, not from within OBS, but with keyboard shortcuts from your keyboard or with the magic of the Elgato Stream Deck. Let's check it out. We've already seen that I can switch to any of these scenes in OBS simply by clicking on them in the bottom left onto any scene. And then the transition will happen just like we expect it to happen. But that's not always convenient because oftentimes we have OBS minimized and in the background and we don't have physical access to it with the mouse. We might be in the heat of the moment and we want to cue a video clip or whatnot without having to either turn to another monitor and quickly look for where that is or maybe you don't have a multiple or a second monitor on your system and you just have the single one you minimize obs and there's just nothing else to look at well in those cases you can switch to another scene using a shortcut key let me show you how to set that up it's fairly straightforward you head over to settings and in there we can find a section called hotkeys and that is kind of what you'd expect them to be each scene at the bottom here when you scroll down is listed and each of them can have a switch to shortcut like here and there and there. Don't get confused by all these things at the bottom. These list all the sources that make up your scene and you have the option to add a shortcut to show or hide such sources right here. But we're not going to worry about that. We worry about the top section in which we can switch to a scene. So for example, if I wanted to switch to my animation scene, I could just click into here into this top field and press any button on my keyboard. So I'm just going to make it simple. I'm going to go for one. I can do literally anything and everything. I could just press Control G, for example, and it will recognize modifier keys or Alt H. This is all going to work. And if you made a mistake, you have to use this little trash can icon to get rid of it. Because if I press backspace or delete, you will see that those are actually recognized as just buttons that are being pressed and they would now be set up as hotkeys. So if you don't want a shortcut to be there, just use the trash can icon and clear it. I want to switch this to number one. And then I've got my moving scene. I like to use maybe number two for that. Then I've got my game. That is maybe number three. You can also use the numpad, the, the numpad block. I've got maybe static image. I'm not going to map, but maybe webcam is going to be number four. And 3D shenanigans is going to be number five. Once I click apply and OK, watch what happens when I use literally just these regular buttons on my keyboard here. I can now go and press number one and it'll transition to that scene. Number two transitions to that. Number three transitions to this. Number four does this and so forth. So you can go and switch without even touching OBS. This is a remarkable way of being able to switch scenes while you're in the heat of the moment without even looking at OBS. Now the trick with this kind of system is that you need to remember which key is mapped to what. So that's very important. But equally important is that sometimes, and you may not realize this, the software that you're using, be that a game or an application, that may use the shortcut keys that you don't use, but it internally has mapped already. So they will then work both at the same time. So I remember I set this up once on my numpad block here. I thought, hey, I'm not using that, but it'd be great for switching scenes in OBS. And I was demonstrating something in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop has this tendency to use the numpad block as an opacity setting for the layers. So that means if I'm pressing number one on the numpad, switching to a scene, it also then set the opacity of the layer I was on to 10% because that's just how Photoshop rolls. So be aware of that. That sometimes might get in your way if you're not entirely sure if your software supports that. Do a rehearsal and see if those keys that you're mapping are really free. Now, I find a better way of working is to not use the keyboard at all and instead use the Elgato Stream Deck to do much the same way. It works with a little external piece of software that I'm going to show you. And with that, you can map each individual scenes and some other functions of OBS and of your entire system on the Stream Deck. And then at the touch of a button, whatever you press shall happen. Let's have a look how to program that. Stream Deck comes with a little piece of software that once installed hides in your taskbar. And that's this little icon here. If you click on it, left click, then the application opens. If you right click on it, you get some configuration options, more like shortcut keys that each of your Stream Decks can be switched into a certain type of configuration. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's worry about the left click option that brings up the regular Stream Deck application. 
it looks like this by default and that's just something to get you started we're going to program these keys they look exactly the same by the way on the screen as they do on the real device so whatever i'm doing here is also going to appear on the real device at the top here you can switch to the actual stream deck in question so this software can control multiple stream decks that are attached to your system i currently have three of them which is my regular stream deck that's the physical device but i also have jay's iphone 5 and iphone 6 and those are ios versions of the same software which is awesome because it means you can either extend stream deck or you can buy the app the stream deck app for ios and then program your iphone exactly the same way or your ipad if you wish at the bottom here, we can see the current configuration for the device that you've chosen at the top here. So this is my device and this is the configuration for my device. I've set up several. One of them is this one here, 3D Shenanigans. If I switch to that, you can see that the layout changes. You can even add little icons here and each of these buttons switches to a different scene in OBS. Notice that the middle button has a slightly different icon. That is because it mutes my microphone. If I need to cough or whatever, then I can press that and my microphone is muted. These things here are just regular scenes. I just put a little icon in there so that it reminds myself of what these things do. Let's set this up. I'll go back to my Streaming 101 setting here. And this kind of looks like what yours will look like. This button in the middle is literally just a link. And we can get rid of it just by clicking the trash can icon here and delete that. On the right hand side here, we have several items that we can display and undisplay if we like. So some of these that may appear in your sidebar, I've already hidden and hiding and showing them works like this with this little hamburger type icon here. For example, mixer, I haven't mapped on here, but if I were to enable it, then I can see that all these things would now show up in the sidebar. There we go. That's mixer. But I don't really want to use Mixer or Voice Mod. In fact, let's go and disable both of them so that you know my tired mind kind of follows what's happening here. Click OK, and then you've whittled down some options. So the ones that we need are OBS Studio, that's this one, and Stream Deck. We're going to have a look at that as well. Open the disclosure triangle on the OBS Studio box and then pick Scene. Left click and drag that literally onto your Stream Deck anywhere you like, maybe here, and drop it in there. And this is now map that button to put a scene switch onto that. Whenever we press that button, the scene that we're going to pick here will be switching in OBS. Let's try it out. We can give it a title. So I'll say animation. Under collection here, this corresponds to the OBS scene collection that we've looked at earlier. If you have multiple, pick the right one. By default, it's got the one that you're currently working with. And then under scene, you can select which scene you'd like for there to be on that button. So I'm going to put animation here. And that's that. Let's drag in another one, like the next scene. Perhaps this one, let's just pick another scene and say moving scene. Awesome. I'll call it moving. And let's drag a third one in, which is maybe my webcam. Pick the webcam scene from down here. And that's that. Now let's go back to OBS and see what this actually looks like. So I press the animation button and sure enough, it goes and comes up with my animation. I press the moving scene, it comes up with that. And I press the webcam scene and it comes up with that. And this is what the physical device looks like. So it's exactly like what we've just seen on the screen. Very, very handy tool. So once again, press this button, press that button and press that button. Awesome stuff. There are some other goodies hiding in there. Let me just go over a couple of these options. Also under the OBS tab, we can find shortcuts for record and stream. So if you wanted to start those things with shortcuts, you can do that. Just put record and stream on here and then you can also label that. So that's record and this one is stream. And that way you're able to kick off those actions from the Stream Deck if you wanted to. You don't have to. It's, it's absolutely personal preference. There's a ton of other stuff you can set up with the Stream Deck. You can set up folders. You can set up uh, multi-actions. You can set up other types of shortcuts that are good for productivity. We're not going to go through all of these now. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a starter here to get you going in the world of streaming. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode.